Hey guys, welcome back. It's Lucy and Ellie from Roman Found. And we're out today metal detecting. We're looking for one thing in particular and that's coins. Are we going to find silver? I hope so. I hope so too. Let's get into it. Just a little patch, Just a little keep patch. us busy. Yeah, keep us busy, a couple of hours in here. See how many coins we can pull up. 28. So this is a field that we've only really visited once before. We've had lots of quirky post-medieval finds come up and it's actually the field that the village currently uses for all the fates. And I think that people have actually been gathering here in the village for, well, I think centuries. I'm quite excited to see what we might find in here today. It's a small patch of land, but we have had a silver fruit knife out of here before, so I feel like a bit of wealth has been lost in the area. Yeah, I'm gonna dig them. Oh, what's that look? It's really shiny in there. Is that a lead? Could be. Look, just there, look, you see it? I'm sure it was gold. Oh, God, imagine. <laughs> Is that a... Oh, it's a pocket watch. Oh my god. Stop it. Oh, that's so cool. That's lovely, that. It's like you still got the face. So this is actually our second pocket watch find. Yeah, it's not one that comes up often, and it's got some really interesting history behind it. Because the first pocket watch was actually invented by a German watchmaker in 1510. That was when they developed the spring technology to really miniaturise the clock mechanism. But then, do you know where the term pocket watch actually came from? No. So the term pocket watch was actually coined by Charles II. who oh, really? Yeah. He's the one who introduced us to waistcoats and started placing the watch inside his pocket. Hence the term pocket watch. And then it very much from then on, from Charles II using it, became a status piece. And like every gentleman had to have one because it was like the finest of the finery. They even used to hand them down through the generations. And like the sons would be given the father's pocket watches. Like it's such a personal and high status item. I'm surprised already we're in first hole and we're finding very personal objects. And I mean, I feel like that just goes to show this feels history that goes back really interconnected with the village itself. This is a little fate field, a little village fate field, so we thought we'd have some quirky finds. And what's this? A little yeah, built first watch. hole. First hole, so that we might have a little, a good, good little session in here. See what comes up. Close her up. Close her up. Just got like a very shallow, it's almost saying it's like a surface find here. Ellie's having a little bit of a rat. Look. Oh, what is that? Is that a little coin? Is that a little coin on the surface? Look. Is it? Or a button? I think it's a half penny, look. Oh, that's so cute. Look, it's a half penny. That'll be like 71. That, a new penny. Yeah, it's called a new penny. Literally chilling on the surface. You could have spotted that by eye. There's Lizzie herself. Oh, so look at good. that. Beautiful, that. It's quite nice that half pennies were carried over when we went to decimalisation, isn't it? Yeah. We don't have them now, but for a couple of years we did. We just don't find them very often, no. either. No. It's sweet, that one. So a half penny is probably one of the coins that's been with us for the longest, and this is actually the last time that we see it appear in circulation, which is at the time of decimalisation, where the spirit of this half penny lingers on with these quirky little tiny coins for about 10 years after decimalisation before they stop being produced. But they're, I think they're a really cool part of coin history and like the last memento of when we used to physically cut coins in half in like the Saxon and medieval times. Oh, that's the imprint. Is that an imprint? Yeah, okay. Oh, this. Okay. Falling out. Here. Here we go. Ooh. Tempe! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, tempe always sounds good, especially this yeah. this age of tempe because it's a good it's a good nickel mix, isn't it? So a nice tempe that. It is. I mean, this this field is used for all village fates, so I would expect nothing less than coin after coin. <laughs> Great little guy. Third hole. Two coins and a pocket watch. Not bad. Da 
duduk sana. Oh, we got here. It's a toilet. Oh my! Another. That's our second. This is our second toy. toy. It's oh, it's another weeks. horse. It's another horse. Look. We never find toys. What a cool little guy. Did we get some luck? Because. A lady literally came in here on a horse and she talk, literally came and talked to us. And now we've got a fan a little horse. That's so funny. How cool is that? He's missing his head. He is missing arms. his head and his arms. Wow. See, a feel full of quirky, quirky finds. He's so cool. That's awesome. Oh, see some of the colour on him. Another second today, our second ever lead toy. I know, and we don't find these often. Toys were starting to be industrially produced from the 17th century, and they were all pretty much made from lead, which is horrific nowadays, considering all the lead poisoning that goes on. It was actually banned from 1966 onwards. You weren't allowed to produce lead toys anymore. And toy soldiers like this one were one of the most popular types. So what do we know about the figure on this horse? So this horse is most likely going to be a British cavalryman, and it was probably produced by the British manufacturer William Brittons, who is the firm who developed the hollow casting technique which this lead toy soldier is made out of. And they developed this manufacturing process from 1893, and were actually the market leader in producing all the lead toys in Britain by 1900. And these were massively popular. Every little boy wanted one, and they all wanted to play with them. But quite interestingly, after the First World War, the toy market shifted away from all of these like military figures. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, because like I feel like families and parents didn't want their children to be playing with these militaristic toys anymore. They don't Spe want that reminder. No, especially not after the horrific things that they went through in the First World War. So then we see quite a decline and they start making more civilian toys. So we've just had our dig interrupted because a lady came in on a young mare um, who wanted to have a little chat to us. She wanted to ask her what we found. We showed her the pocket watch that we literally just dug out the hole. And then the next thing we go and find, <laughs> This little little guy in a horse look. She bought us some look. How cool's that? Little That's lead so toy funny. Bit. So cool. And a massive thing for the finds too. We need a bigger tin. Yeah. Look at that. Two massive finds. The finds tin full. We can go home now. <laughs> <laughs> So rather nicely, this is a much earlier example to the previous lead toy that we've just found. You can tell that this is an earlier one because it's a, it's a semi-flat mould. We can see that it's probably most likely made in Germany and really shows this late Victorian, Edwardian era where they have this like toy soldier craze. They're like <laughs> obsessed with the military and they want all these toy soldiers. What cool, oh I love a toy day. We've never had a toy day. It's blown a trumpet, look. That is so funny. It's so cool. Why are we suddenly finding loads of little toys? What's on him? Like, what's this he got a big bag? bag? What is that? That's cool so that? different. I love it. Was it part of his trumpet thing? Maybe. Is it like a tuba or something? Is he blowing like a massive, massive horn? We never find lead toys and now we found three in like the last month. Two in one day. This is a really nice one, this one. Yeah. I reckon this is older than the one that we just found. Yeah, I think so. It's definitely got more age to it. You can tell by the production. Wow. I don't know if he's going to fit. <laughs> what is with these massive finds? That's hilarious. He's going to fit in there. Do a bit of rearranging. There we go. Look at that. Well, I don't think we can find any more things. <laughs> We're going to have to go home now. The fine stone's really full. If you're loving our digging adventures, please remember to hit that subscribe button and follow our channel.
14, 15, 16. What's that we got? What was that 15, 16? Yeah, is it more lead? <laughs> Is it trash? Is it foil? Foil. Oh no! no. It's the champagne they've been having in this field, look. Is it champagne It's topper? definitely champagne top, look at that. Got a high signal here. Trash or treasure? High 20s. Mm. Oh, what's that, look? Is it more lead? More lead. Or... Is it sign? See? Just lead. Is there something on it? Mm. Have a little look. I think it's just some molten lead. Is it the lead toy factory? The lead toy factory, that's what it is. They're making all the toys here, this bit left over. <laughs> 1920. We've got a coin. I can't like it when it just chills inside of the Is it a washer? Is it a washer? No, a silver no, washer. A silver washer. <laughs> Why? Why would you do that to us? That's from a marquee, that is. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we've gone back to the classic where I found classic snack breaks. What you got, Lucy? Popcorn and Kit Kat. Popcorn and Kit Kat, look forward to it? Yeah, that's it's been a long day. It's been a long day, let's dig in. So 20s. What are you expecting, Lucy? Actually, a coin. What's that? Oh, oh yeah. I think we've got a coin. <laughs> that's right. It's a George. Oh, a little bit older. It's a George Fruppence, I think. There we go. Lovely little George, look. Look, the lovely thistle. Oh, yeah. Beautiful one. What we got? What age we got? 40, 42. 42. 42. There we go. Nice That's wartime. Wartime one, that one. Woohoo. George VI. Beautiful little one, that. Fourth coin for the coins tin now. Coin shooting. Coin shooting. George to go in and join Lizzie. Look. Looking healthy in there. <laughs> Very healthy. Yeah, some mid twenties. I think it's like a whole frame of frame. There we go. Oh. Should we bring it out the hole? Oh, oh a crown. Look at that for a half crown. That's a beauty. Oh. Oh. George is sick, just like that three pence. Beautiful, look at the condition of it. Oh, it's in really nice condition. Look at that. It's not every day that you find something this big in no. silver, is there? This is only like our third, this is like our fourth ever half crown. So this is one of our favorite types of coinage to find, the half crown. It's such a massive target. And I feel like they've got some really iconic designs on them. And in fact, the design was in use for 450 years. Can you believe that? That's incredible. Like, yeah, because the first half crown was minted during the reign of Henry VIII. And it was actually minted in gold. How insane would it be oh, to find one of wow, those? Wow, I want one. I know, I want <laughs> one. And then the silver ones were introduced during the reign of Edward VI. This half crown is actually George VI and still has silver in it, thankfully. I'm quite glad about that. <laughs> Because it's actually from 1946 that they changed the composition of the half crowns from silver to cupro nickel. 
So when was the half crown solid silver? Pre-1920, the half crowns would have all been solid silver. And it's quite an interesting fact to why they changed to being 50-50 in this period from 1920 to 1946. And that is because of World War I. Essentially, during World War I, Britain needed to borrow money and silver from the US to fund World War I because it was a massively expensive endeavour. As a result of that, they had to cut the silver content in their coinage in half in order to repay this debt. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the finds that we're discovering in this field have got a little bit of a military connection to them. I feel like they're all from this war period and they even the toy soldiers like relate back to the military and like all of the coins are from this 1940s era. I think it's really fascinating. That was like a spill to me. How many? How many? How many? Oh. There's one. The nice big one, look. Oh. 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 It's a big George. Beautiful big one, Penny. Yeah. I like haven't found one of these before. No. You can tell it's a spill because it's, look, it's got that classic green I've been against another coin. And then, here, we've got, oh. Here we've got here. George, George VI. From the size of this one, it looks like it's going to be yeah, classic oh, yeah. ships, half penny. Half Look penny. at that. Do you think we've got any more? Don't know. Oh, that's only two. Is it one there? Where's my edge digger? I'm too fancy. more in here. There. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, oh, there's another one. This one looks older. Much older. What have we got? Oh, what have we got? George V. There we yeah. go. Penny and two half pennies so far. The lovely old head of George V on there. Cool. Do you think that's it? What about in the quad? It's always so exciting finding a coin spill. So who have we got here, Ellie? So we've got a 1918 George V half penny, a massive George V penny, 1928. I love the size of these big one pennies. And then a very interesting little 1942 George VI halfpenny, which is this lovely wartime coin, which actually features the golden hind on it. So this coin spot really covers about, what, three decades? Yeah, three decades. And all of these would have probably been in circulation at the same time, because it's this, this interesting time where you have lots of different periods of monarchs all mixed together in denominations. One hold, three coins. <laughs> <laughs> So if you're loving all of the history that we've uncovered in this small fake field, then you'll have to check out all the history that we found with Tom Ayling in Oxfordshire. And let us know in the comments what your favourite find was from today's dig. Thanks for watching! If you feel inspired and want to get out digging, then we've got a 10% discount code off at LP Metal Detecting, so treat yourself to some new gear. The link's in the description.